tonight at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. There was an ice storm this week. In fact, the interstate highway system has been closed for three days, but it opened up later this afternoon. And that hasn't kept LSU gymnastics fans from coming to the PMAC here in Baton Rouge for tonight's exciting showdown between the LSU Tigers and the visiting Crimson Tide of Alabama. Hi, everybody. I'm Bart Connor, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark. Laura Rutledge will be reporting from the floor on this competition tonight. Two great teams off to really good starts this season. Let's look to last week. Uh, LSU got a big win against Florida down there in Gainesville, and Alabama got a significant win over Georgia. But these are two programs that are really in different stages of development, aren't they? Boy, when you look at LSU's culture and the way this program has evolved over the many, many years, at the core, at its very heart, is Dee Dee Bro. Her enthusiasm, passion, and energy, that is what all of this is built on. And then you look at Alabama, they are built on tradition. Right. Every team, every gymnast, year after year, they wear that A on their chest like a superpower <laughs> and a reminder of the legacy that they hope to continue. All right, well, we're in for an exciting night of to competition tonight, and there will be a full house in the PMAC. Here's some things we'll be looking forward to updating you on. The LSU gymnastics culture, as you mentioned, Kathy, is really something. It all dates to Dee Dee Bro in her 41st year, but she's put all the pieces of the puzzle together here in Baton Rouge. Their last loss was in this building four years ago to Alabama in 2013. Alabama senior uh, Kiana Winston, we're going to talk about her journey. The SEC Beam co-champion is a senior this year. And then we're going to talk about LSU's inspiration as a young lady named Gracie Zombrecker. And for more on the other stories we'll be commenting, talking about tonight, and of course a little fun, is Laura Rutt. Let's just go down to Laura. All right, thank you, Bart. And it's a special night here for many reasons. You mentioned the crowd. It will be crazy in here. And they also have some alumni, men's and women's gymnasts, 60 of them in the house tonight. One of them, Ashley Natt, and she's being honored. She's a more recent alumni being honored with a bobblehead. I'm trying to make this thing bobble. There we go. And I think you really know that you've made it in life if you have a bobblehead. I asked Ashley about this, and she said she kind of can't believe it, but she has had to get as many bobbleheads as she could muster up to send to so many family members who want to have these on their shelves. Obviously, we hope we can keep them on our shelves as well. And when you think about Ashley Natt and her transition from being a gymnast just as recently as last year to being a coach, a student coach on this team, it's happened very seamlessly. But Lexi Priestman told me it did take some time for Ashley to understand that she can be a coach. She can be a little bit hard on these gymnasts and expect a lot out of them. She has done that. She's accomplished it so well. Now, let's get ready to get this whole thing started here with LSU. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome our visitors from the University of Alabama with a record of 1-1, one 1-0 and one, one and oh in the SEC. Let's meet the Crimson Tide. Kiana Winston, Lexi Graber, Nikki Guerrero, Ari Guerra, Peyton Ernst, Shay Mahoney, Abby Armbrecht, Bailey Key, Alonza Cloffer, Mac Brandon, Angelina Giancroach, Jenny Loeb, Maddie Desch, Winter Childers, and Kylie Dixon. The coaches for Alabama are Bill Lorenz and Brian Rashilla. The head coach for the Alabama Crimson Tide in her fourth season is Dana Duckworth. Ladies and gentlemen, the University of Alabama. And Tiger fans, time to take out those phones. Let's light it up here in the Merritt Center for our Tigers.
nearly 10,000 people here at the PMAP. Fans, it's go time! And here come your top ranked, undefeated, and defending champions of the Southeastern Conference, your Fighting Tigers of LSU! Let's meet the Fighting Tigers! was a member of the J.O. National Team and a Mars National Champion, a freshman from Popple, Texas, Reagan Campbell. A freshman from Fort Myers, Florida, Bridget Dean. A two-time U.S. National Team member and Olympic Trials participant, a freshman from Hackettstown, New Jersey, Christina Desiderio. A freshman from Athens, Georgia, Sammy Durante. A freshman from Ocean Springs, Mississippi, Sarah Edwards. A freshman from Mandeville, Olivia Gunter. Freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, Grayson Stanley. Sophomore from Claremont, North Carolina, Ashlyn Kirby. A member of the All-SEC Freshman Team and a sophomore from Bristol, England, Ruby Harold. The first freshman to win the NCAA title in school history. She is the reigning National Vault Champion, a sophomore from Chino, California, Kennedy Edney. A junior from Waxhaw, North Carolina, Juliana Canamella. She is the first SEC Bars champion for LSU in more than 20 seasons. A three-time All-American and now a junior from Cincinnati, Ohio, Lexi Friesman. The 2017 SEC Floor Champion and a two-time All-American, a junior from Houston, Texas, McKenna Kelly. She is the first NCAA Bars National Champion in school history, one of the top all-arounders in the nation, an eight-time All-American and a two-time All-SEC performer. Now a junior from Lee Summit, Missouri. Say hey, Sarah Finnegan. This Tiger is a senior from Plano, Texas. Please welcome Lauren Lee. One of the top beam workers in the nation, an All-American, and now a senior from Redwood City, California, Aaron McAdeg. And Tiger fans, one of the most consistent all-arounders in the nation, a 12-time All-American, three-time All-SEC performer, now a senior from Temple, Georgia, Oh Maya Hambrick. Now, Tiger fans, let's meet your Tiger coaches. In her first season as a graduate assistant, please welcome the 2017 National Floor Champion, Ashley bugs -Nett. In her eighth season as volunteer assistant coach, two-time national champion, Ashley Claire Kearney Thickpin. In his sixth season as associate head coach, Coach the most Mars national champions in the history of the NCAA, Jay Clark. And in his 19th season as assistant coach, he has coached the most vault national champions in the history of the NCAA, Bob Moore. And Tiger fans, in her 41st season, the Dean of Coaches in the history of the Southeastern Conference, and the birthday girl, please welcome head coach, Dee Dee Bro.
Tiger fans, these are your Fighting Tigers of LSU. And now, Tiger fans, we ask that you remain standing and kindly remove your caps as we honor America and remember those in our service with our national anthem. Performed by David St. Romain, Chris Downey, and Jeremy Downey. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Folks, I want to tell you something, and tell you for sure. You know there's not much, but that old sunshine won't cure. So when you're down and you feel kind of low, just walk right out in this golden glow. Try not to worry, and don't ever whine. Yes, some are good friends and neighbors. All you got to do is just take a little bit, just a spoonful. Let good old time the sunshine never go. Just one more time. Tiger fans, please turn your attention to the floor as we welcome Director of Athletics, Joe Oliva, and the Governor of the Great State of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards. Thank you. First, I want to start by recognizing all these LSU alumni gymnasts, and I want to thank them for representing this university and this state so well for so long as tremendous student athletes. Thank you so much, and welcome back. God bless you. We also have a special lady with us tonight celebrating her birthday, and she is so much more than a gymnastics coach, although she's the best at that, and we appreciate her very much. She is a tireless champion for this university and for this state, and we just couldn't have a better ambassador representing us in everything that you do. Every cause that you adopt, you are a true champion. And so we thank you so very much, and if you would join me in Wishing Coach D.D. Bro a very happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. It's an honor for us to have you with us tonight, and thank you for all you do for the state of Louisiana and for LSU. You're terrific. We're here tonight to honor D.D. Bro, who's got the heart of a tiger. Her competitive spirit and her passion for what she does and for this state 
and for Louisiana State University is unheard of. Her teams always compete at the highest level and strive for excellence in all they do, on the mat, in the classroom, and in the community. Dita, you're a treasure. We love you. Happy birthday. Go Tigers! All right, thanks for watching our pre-meet show on SEC Plus. Be sure to tune in to the SEC Network at 8.30 Eastern for our meet as Alabama takes on LSU. You don't want to miss the action. Friday Night Heights presented by Belk on the SEC Network. We'll see you shortly.
whichever row is selected, every fan in that row will win a free box combo voucher from Raisin Games. These impressive stats, folks. Packed house here at the PMAC, and last season, LSU averaged over 10,000 fans per meet for the first time. This is a 29 meet home win streak. They haven't lost here in four years, and they've defeated top five teams nine times during the streak. The last home loss, by the way, was to the team they're contending with today. That was Alabama back in 2013. I'm Bart Connor calling the action along with Kathy Johnson Clark. Laura Rutledge will be reporting from the sidelines. Now, Kathy, as expected, LSU off to a really hot start in 2018. Absolutely. All teams defend their houses aggressively, but LSU the last few years has been upping that ante, exploding into season. At the very beginning, charging up a hill like an army with their swords flaring. They open with huge gymnastics and then try to build sustain as they go. Now, led by Dee Dee Bro. I think she has the original tiger blood in her veins. <laughs> this is Dana Duckworth, coach at Alabama. And on the flip side, they don't open their season with huge gymnastics. They're training those big tricks, but they're gonna put them in as the season progresses. What both teams though seem ready to do here, and that's stick landings. LSU introduced their stick crown we saw a couple of weeks ago. And Alabama, not to be outdone, well, they have a stick belt and it may be the clash of the crowns and the belts <laughs> here today in this competition all right things looking good the stage is set here and a lot of folks packing this house at the pmac in baton rouge yeah yeah i will okay yeah yeah okay cool okay Okay. Okay. Two thousand thirteen, Alabama beat LSU in here. That's the last time that has happened. I'm Bart Connor along with Kathy Johnson Clark. Laura Rutledge will be reporting from the sidelines. Now, Kathy, as expected, LSU off to a terrific start in 2018. And Bart, all teams defend their houses aggressively, but LSU tends to up that ante, exploding at the beginning of season like an army charging up a hill with swords flying, led by Dee Dee Bro, who I think has the original tiger blood flowing through her veins. They open with big gymnastics and try to build and sustain that. On the flip side, Alabama, coached by Dana Duckworth, they didn't open their season with the big, huge gymnastics. They're gonna unveil those big tricks as the season goes on. But what both teams, I think, are ready to do, and that's stick landing. LSU brought out the stick crown a couple of weeks ago, and not to be outdone, well, Alabama has their stick belt. It may just be the clash of the crowns against the belts. All right, we're going to keep track of the stuck landings because, as we all know, in collegiate gymnastics, there's so much parity these days. It often comes down to who sticks most landings. LSU, the home team, will get the advantage to start on vault. Here is the lineup, and what an audible call here. Juliana Canamel is going, and we'll explain. She's in the lineup because in the warm-up just a few minutes ago, Kennedy Edney tweaked her knee. Juliana does a Yurchenko full, very clean vault. I know Coach Bob Moore is going to be really excited with that start, especially since she stepped in at the last minute. Good clean form, tight position in the air, and a really solid landing to build on. Take a look at the lineup for the visiting Crimson Tide. Winter Childers will lead them off there. An impressive group without doubt from Alabama six times. They've won the national championship nine times the SEC title, so they are enormously experienced. That's coach Brian Rashilla standing by the uneven bars. This has been his event for many, many years. 
They want to get a good, clean start here so far. Routine is flowing really well. Let's see if she can get this dismount half in to a double back. Really <laughs> cool dismount. You won't see that often in gymnastics. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. She has more on Kennedy Edney. Well, yeah, Bart, you mentioned that she tweaked her knee in warm-ups. That is correct. And so they decided just to take her out of the vault lineup as well as the floor lineup. Usually she would perform all around tonight. We'll see her on bars, and then the plan is to see her on beam as well. They just want to make sure that she is feeling fully healthy. And as you both know, it's not worth risking it at this point in the season. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, we watched her in warm-ups, and that's just cringeworthy on that landing. Luckily, she appears to be okay, but they're going to rest those knees a little bit. And good for LSU. They have so much depth this year that they can pick up the pace. Sarah Finnegan now. This could be the cleanest Yurchenko fall in the uh -oh. country. Elegant vault with a perfect landing. She loves wearing that crown. <laughs> and she'll be... Receiving the crown for that landing. Boy, did she plant this. And this vault is as pretty as that crown will sit on her head. Really nice form. Legs just squeeze tight together. She spots the landing early. And there you go. The first presentation of the stick crown for LSU tonight. Well deserved. Sarah Finnegan, the junior from Lee's Summit, Missouri. Go back to bars, Alabama. Winter Childers off to a great start. A career high, by the way, 9.85, which brings up now Ari Guerra. Nice to see her back in the lineup. She turned her ankle right before season started. Missed a couple of meets. Very nice, perfect distance away from the bar. She's muscling these hip cast handstands just a little bit. Needs a little more flow and swing. Again, right there, a little short on that last handstand. Working hard, though, to finish with a double layout. Excellent job. Oh, she fought for that stick so close. Her feet just slid forward. Really impressive part of the routine right here. Nice laid out position, and she worked so hard to try to get that landing. We go back to the vault for LSU. 9-9 was the score for Sarah Finnegan. This brings up Ruby Harold, the sophomore from England, two-time Olympian with the Great Britain team. Ruby's been working really hard to get in this lineup. She has a one and a half twist with a 10-0 start value. It's one of the things we're gonna look for in college gymnastics. The more 10-0 start values, the better. One and a half. Oh man, did she have to work hard to pull that landing. Another gymnast might have sat that down. In fact, Kathy, in the warm-up, the one-touch warm-up, she did sit this vault down a few minutes ago. Just did not quite get her hands onto the table in a position where she could really block up and rotate. All right, we'd like to welcome our audience joining us now from the previous meet, Kentucky, Florida. We hope that was a thriller over there as we have a great one on hand here tonight. In Baton Rouge, it's LSU and Alabama and a packed house here at the PMAC. We're in the middle of the first rotation. Jenny Loeb up now. The first two performances for Alabama on the Ooh. bars. Winter oh. Childers a 9.85 and Ari Guerra a 9.8 and an unfortunate mistake for Jenny Loeb who's had some shoulder issues and rarely in the lineup on bars. One of the things that Dana Duckworth and Brian Rashilla wanted was aggressive handstands. She went so hard to try to show up that handstand. She went too hard and went over. It's five tenths of a point off for the fall. She'll resume the routine at that point. She's had surgery on both shoulders. In fact, eight anchors in one shoulder, four anchors in the other. So she hasn't had as much experience in the lineup as some of the other team members. Alabama has two scores, a 9.85 and a 9.8 leading into this. You still want to fight for every tenth of a point. Those little minor leg separations and feet separations that she has in this routine will add up a little bit, but if she can come up with a landing right here, what a nice landing, a little bit of a pogo stick landing, but she finished strong. To remind the audience the rules in dual meet competition. There's six gymnasts per team in each event. The best five scores out of those six count towards the team total after four apparatus. The team with the highest cumulative score wins. The home team event order, vault, bars, beam, floor. The away team does bars, vault, floor, and they have to finish on beam. We go back to the vault for the home team. 
Ruby Harold only a 9-6. This brings up Maya Hamburg. Doing a one and a half twist. Really nicely done in the air. She overcooked the landing, bringing her head forward. And that just over-rotated the vault, but it is getting so much better in the air. Nice block, a little bit of arm bend on the table. Notice how she brought that head forward as the feet landed. That's going to cause you to take a step. Dee Dee Bro was telling us on vault right now, they're going for good execution in the air, not the stuck landing. The stuck landings will come later in the season. That was a big ball for the senior from Temple, Georgia, Maya Hamrick. Jenny Loeb's score is in now. It's only a 9-1, so you might remember from the rules, there's a score can be dropped. So Kylie Dixon now has a little extra pressure because they want to replace that 9-1. Whoa! Boy, they took that instruction to heart. They are being aggressive on their handstands. They'd rather see these mistakes of commission, where you're not leaving something out or holding back. Go hard, go strong. Beautiful swing and excellent height, amplitude, on that dismount, might have been a little bit short on that final handstand. Good swing into the dismount, a half in, half out, and that is a stock landing. We're gonna see the belt, I think. Right here, she's got her shoulders so far over that she then goes into an arch handstand. That's gonna be a pretty big deduction there. But this was the highlight of the routine. Excellent amplitude. And look at this. She wanted to see that belt come out. And I'm sure she'll wear it proudly. Sarah Edwards now. Maya Hambrick had a 9-8. With the shortest run in collegiate gymnastics and pulls off a really high flying one and a half twist. So much power in this little gymnast. LSU has three season high scores there. Hambrick, Finnegan, and Canamella on vault, so Bob Moore's vault team looking very impressive here in the first rotation for the Fighting Tigers. Kiana Winston, the senior from Fort Worth, Texas. What an impressive career she has had at Alabama. Hard to believe she's already a senior, Kathy. I know, and watching the evolution of this gymnast throughout her collegiate career, you would never have seen this relaxed smile from her as a freshman. But the training is there. The, all of the difficulty that she needs is right there. She has so much talent. And that's what Coach Duckworth has told her, just showed up. Wow, now that's impressive. Good for her. All right, there, there comes the judges. The green flag is up. Kylie Dixon's score is in a 9.75. So important routine here for Winston. Notice how she took that big, deep breath right before the routine. Really settles in. Watch this transition to the low bar. It's ridiculous. Love the combination. High pack salto down to the low bar. She is so beautiful on this event. Effortless. When something looks easy, the gymnast is doing their job. The technique takes over. The execution is there. She can float that double leg. Lay out right into the ground for the landing. What an exquisite routine. Just really nice. Miss that handstand. They're going to take off a little bit there. The judges sit right on the side, so no hiding from them. What a lovely double layout. So floaty right into a stuck leg. And the first belt of the night presented to Kiana Winston, well-deserved. <laughs> to vault now, Lexi Priestman. She's had a great vault performance so far this year. It was absolutely stunning last week, and this was nearly as perfect. She has a very compact vault. It's not quite as high and far as some of the huge vaults we've seen, but it is technically such a nice vault. She fought for the landing, had to move that left foot out to the side a little bit. Pretty impressive for a young lady who has battled a variety of leg injuries over the years. 9-8 was the score for Sarah Edwards for Vor Her. So the low score for LSU will be the 9-6 that they will drop from Ruby Harold. Lexi Priestman's score, we wait on hers. And Alabama gets set now for Mackenzie Brennan. Kiana Winston, 9-8-7-5 before her. 
This is a really strong one-two finish for Alabama with Kiana Winston leading into this routine. Beautiful handstand position. Really showing off the position. Bounced a little bit on that hip off of her hips. She might have been a tad short on the final handstand. Nice position in the air. Oh, she didn't need to pike down. She knows it. She piked just a little too much to come in for the landing, and it caused her to over-rotate. Shoulders way over the bar. Very nice vertical position in that handstand. And the dismount. Now watch right here where she breaks her hips. She's in the stretch position. Stretch, pike. And that just caused her to over-rotate. Sarah Finnegan on the vault, the high score for LSU in the first rotation. She gets a 9-9 in the stick crown for the Tigers. I feel glorious, glorious. Got a chance to start again. I was born for this, born for this. It's who I am. I could have forget. I made it through the... Celebrating Dee Dee Bro's birthday and a packed house in the PMAC, which should probably also be known as the house that Dee Dee built. Hi, everybody. My name is Bart Connor, and I'm proud to be joined by Kathy Johnson Clark. Laura Rutledge is reporting from the floor. You know, this meet is tied after the first rotation. We thought it would be a close meet, but this, what a tribute tonight to Dee Dee Bro. She has really taken this program from irrelevance to relevance by never taking her foot off the gas pedal. And you know, back in the 80s and 90s, when Georgia and Alabama were crashing Utah's dynasty party and really elevating the SEC, winning the first two national titles from the SEC, Dee Dee Bro was inch by inch, step by step, just developing and building the foundation of this program. Then she brought Bob Moore in in 2000, then had the great instinct to bring Jay Clark in, who brought his master recruiting skills. They can now get the talent that they need to build this program and the structure and organization so everything is working. Dee Dee Bro has put all the pieces of the puzzle together here in Baton Rouge and we'll hear from her about her journey when we come back. LSU is, is, is an engine, it's a, a resource for the entire state of Louisiana and to be a part of that, be a part of something that's so big and so powerful is gratifying. University support and, and what our athletic director, what Joe Oliva has allowed us to have at LSU to be able to build the facility that we have and have the support that we have now has been um, extremely gratifying and uh, it truly does epitomize the fact that if you take advantage of of all the resources that you have and um, work every day as though everything counts, um, your dreams will come true. You know, things change, people change, people come and go, but uh, the pride and, and the tradition is always here. Dean of Coaches in the SEC, and she means so much more than that to LSU. We're joined now by Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards. So good to see you, Governor. And you presented Dee Dee Bro with a special certificate picture for her birthday, and you said a really nice thing, saying that she means so much more to this state than just a gymnastics coach. What do you mean by that? Well, she's an ambassador for this university, for our state. She's been here 41 years. Just look at this arena. It is sold out, and we have a team that competes for SEC and national championships every year. And, you know, she has so much fight in her. She is a winner. You know, I'm just so proud of her and what she means for, for our state, and, and I'm happy to be able to wish her a happy birthday tonight. Yeah, you're also here to see a treat with two of the best in the country on this floor tonight. What can you say about the way that this state and these fans have embraced gymnastics? Well, ju just look at it. I don't think there are many other arenas of this size in the country that sell out uh, for college gymnastics. 
and we are seeing two of the best teams in the country. These are great student athletes, not just athletes, but student athletes, and it's a pleasure to be here. All right, we'll see if we can get you a stick crown over here pretty soon. Absolutely. We need to get one. And go Tigers. All right, thanks, Governor. Thank you. Bart. Thank you, Laura. Talk about how the home attendance has improved. In 2010, it was about 2,700 per meet. Look at this, 2017, seven years later, averaging over 10,000 fans in the BMAC for every home meet. That's third in the NCAA. Of course, the legendary programs at Utah and Alabama still hold all the standards in terms of seating capacity and attendance, but LSU is a real big deal now as we get ready for the second rotation. Alabama on the vault with Maddie Desch. Maddie's going to open with a Yurchenko full. She's training the one and a half. Not quite the stick on the landing she would have liked, but clean in the air. Beaten 11 times in the lineup last year for Alabama, recovering from an off-season shoulder injury. Bar lineup for LSU, Sammy Durante leads them off. What a fascinating story about this young lady. Her mother, Dana, was the former coach at the University of Georgia. Sammy intended to go to Georgia, but when her mother was let go, Sammy decided to come down here and compete for LSU. Now, she's from Athens, Georgia, and of course, associate head coach there, Jay Clark, has known her a long time, so she feels quite comfortable here competing for the Tigers. And an absolutely brilliant move to bring her in. She has taken over this leadoff spot so perfectly. I was talking to her mom and said, she is so aggressive on this event with the swing. This is even better than I saw last week. She combines everything you need for bars. Aggressive swing, good technique, attacks the handstands. Let's see if she can get the landing. Oh, so close, half in, half out. Just a little hop back. Now the judges don't get the opportunity to put this nifty little protractor in and the gymnast doesn't freeze for them in that position. So they have to take all that in as they watch. Half in, half out. Good job. To the vault now for Alabama. Maddie Desch led them off with a 9-7-7-5. This is Abby Armbrecht, the junior. And she's doing the one and a half here. Ooh. Good fight on that landing. I thought she might be a little bit lacking in rotation, but she pulled it out. Nice to see the stretched body. Watch the block off the table. The judges are looking for it to go up, really rise, and finish the twist above the table. She was at the level of the table, maybe slightly below. Dana Duckworth told us that hoping to add more 10 vault values by the uh, later part in the season. And that's really part of their philosophy, isn't it? Absolutely. Is, and she said, Alabama starts as Alabama starts. She said, typically we get rolling mid to late season and we start adding difficulty. Maya Hambrick now on the bar. Sammy Durani in 9-9 to start them off. This has been one of the most consistent gymnasts in all of collegiate gymnastics. And she is an improved from her freshman year to this year, so much improvement on every event, adding difficulty. Might have been a tad short on the final handstand. Great bar routine so far. Half in, half out, nice form in the air. And boy, did she find that handstand. And I love the announcer every time she hits. Oh, Maya, it's wonderful. Mike Smith, the PA announcer, firing up this crowd here at the PMAC. Just beautiful. There is the stick crown for Maya Hambrick. I have a feeling she's going to wear that a lot this year. She is such a technically clean and sound gymnast in every level. Abby Armbrecht had a 9825. This brings up Winter Childers. You see her ball package for the first two meets of the year. Winter's also working on the one and a half twist. Good landing, not quite the amplitude that you need to see for a huge score. Again, when you watch vault, you see them run, you want to see them really lift off the table, explode up and out. She finishes with her head below the level of the table, but does come up with a great landing. Maya Hambrick's score for LSU on bars is in. It's a 9-9-2-5 for the senior. That's a career high. Ruby Harold next to go. 
Now this is such a unique routine. And she really has to dial everything in. Some of the skills are quite risky. But if she hits, she can knock out a big score. Watch this combination right there. The Zuko shoot all the way through to the handstand on the low bar. And she does a toe on blind here into a Jaeger front. Very well done so far. Everything's just a little different, including the dismount. A double front, really hard to stick perfectly. Nice routine. She competed in the Olympics in Rio for Great Britain. You talk about different styles. I mean, they coach a little bit differently. Watch in. that. Really unique skill. Jams through her arms, shoots to the handstand. Double front, she has an uncanny sense in the air to be able to find that landing. And that's a risky dismount in collegiate gymnastics. It is very tough to stick a double front somersault. Good for her. Shea Mahoney now. Beautiful form in the air. I love the straight legs, pointed toes, and a higher vault than we've seen. Each vault's gotten a little bit better. Winter Childers before her, a 9-8. So the highest score for Alabama so far in the vault is a 9-8-2-5. We're used to seeing Alabama usually really blast their vaults. I'm not quite seeing that explosiveness today, are you? We're not. We're not seeing them convert the forward speed from the round off and pre-flight into the block off the table. And on the other hand, LSU knocking it out of the park on bars here. Ruby Harold has a 9-9, nine -nine, a career high for her. Now we mentioned in the warm-ups, Kennedy Edney tweaked her knee. We saw that locked knee landing. We saw her warm-up on bars. She does a big dismount here, but she seemed to be able to control the landing. She's going to compete on bars and beam. Nice big release move out of the clear hip. Again, the clear hip to handstand to her bail. The vault definitely rattled her a little bit, affected her confidence, but she's come back really strong here. Nice to see. Gorgeous double layout. That's the prettiest position we've seen so far in the air, and I know Jay Clark is so proud of this young lady. This is a clear hip to the reverse hat. Two feet above the bar, nice height. And the dismount, look how straight she is, like a pencil rotating in the air and finds the landing. And <laughs> I think that was a generous stick crown. Maybe they're just, uh, there's a little sympathy element to that because she did tweak her knee. At this point, after that landing on ball, any landing is a successful I landing for her. I think they gave her the crown for the position in the air. And the Dixon now. Whoa, good distance but did not take it up enough. And so you didn't have that combination of height and distance, which then gets you out of position to find the landing. Before her, Shea Mahoney had a 9.825. So there's two 9.825s for Alabama, uh, Alabama on ball, but nothing bigger yet. So we're gonna check out the height here. Not quite as high as we've seen, four and a half feet up. She piked, that will be another deduction. And then the dismount was huge, but the hop was even bigger. We go back to bars for LSU. By the way, the first four routines are all 9-9 nine, nine or plus the 9-9, nine, nine, over 9-9. Nine, nine. Watch this combination here. Big reverse heck right to the pack salto. Love to see those two release moves combined. This is such a perky routine. She just bounces from skill to skill and punctuates it with a perfect double layout. Well done. That's the best routine I've seen her do. The three-time All-American out of Cincinnati, 2017 SEC uneven bar champ. That was just a gorgeous and very difficult combination of back-to-back -back release moves. And then check this out. I love that little hop there from the low bar to the high. Legs perfectly together on this double layout. Absolutely picture perfect on the landing. Let's go down to Laura. We, Bart, we've talked about Lexi Priestman's injury. She's had eight surgeries. She told me this year she's finally going for it. She doesn't care anymore. She doesn't care what her body can handle. She just wants to go for it and do it. Final vaulter for Alabama, Nikki Guerrero. They cap it off with a one and a half twist, almost a stick, just a little shift back with that one foot. She is so consistent on that ball. 
9-7 was the score for her teammate before her, Kylie Dixon. Now the judges don't just look for height and distance, they look for form. She has a little bit of knee bend in the ball. Watch right here, legs apart, and then they're not quite straight. But boy, does she open those arms up to the side. Alabama has not broken it in 9-9 on vault, but LSU, look at those scores. Everybody 9-9 or more for LSU on bars, and that brings up the perfectionist Sarah Finnegan. She has an opportunity here to just knock this out of the arena. Perfect handstand position. Nice transition to low bar. Let's see if she can finish this routine. What a rotation oh, they have we're had. We're talking a huge score so for LSU. Far, Sarah Finnegan oh. nails it. Now in the first meet of the year, LSU against Arkansas, they had an unreal 49-6. They might even go higher tonight. This is a team that just caught on fire and this stick is contagious. They all caught the bug and went for it. Let's go down to Laura with Alabama's coach Dana Duckworth. Thank you, Bard. Coach, how would you assess the amplitude of vault? Oh, I thought we said some very big vaults. We still got to get some more controlled landings, and we got to get some more people healthy that we can put some more big vaults in there. But, you know, we have a job to do today. It is to come out here and be Alabama and be confident, be aggressive, and build this kind of momentum. And so what I said to the ladies, you know, let's go over to the floor and be us and feed off this energy and feed off this great crowd. How do you beat us on floor? Well, you and you sell it and you and you just have fun that's what we do best have fun we are prepared we are ready we're just going to go do alabama all right we can't wait to see it thank you roll tie Bart. okay nine nine seven five was the score for sarah finnegan that's why the pmac erupted and she's wearing the stick crown halfway through a great meet here at lsu and the home team has a lead of six cents of a point Welcome back to the PMAC. Look at this score. LSU with a lead of six tenths of a point over Alabama. But as we've documented before, Kathy Johnson Clark, Alabama knows how to win. Six national championships to their credit, nine SEC titles, one of the most legendary programs in all of gymnastics history. Of course, Sarah and David Patterson led to those championships, including 27 individual NCAA champions. Now this is one of the great programs in all of sports and in many ways I think Dana Duckworth and her team has earned the right to face themselves towards the postseason as opposed to LSU's philosophy. They've perfected the art of pacing and really figuring out when to unveil certain difficult passes. In fact, you see the energy in this arena. They were afraid their athletes were getting too hyped with this competition. So they were going to warm up some of their harder skills. They decided not to. They're going to stay conservative. But trust me, they have them in their back pocket. All right, let's take a look at who's taking the next step. Brought to you by Regents, Kathy. As I mentioned, that pocket. We saw two one and a half twists today on vault from Alabama, but they have a potential to put six 10-0 start value vaults. What they really want to see are these E-level passes like this full twisting double back. And they have a bunch of them that they can add to the lineup as the season progresses. That's the goal. Kiana Winston off to a great start for the Crimson Tide, but they are six tenths in the hole as we go to the third of four rotations. We'll talk to Kiana Winston about her journey. My college career, I have grown um, a lot as an individual and as a gymnast. I've learned to trust myself and my training and my body and just to really just trust the coaching staff. Kiana, I mean the joy, that smile, and uh, the, the quiet, humble 
leadership that she brings. She just is incredibly from an ethical standpoint. I wouldn't have never expected the success that I have right now. If I could go back and tell the little girl dreaming about going to college and masters that you will be so successful here, I wouldn't believe myself because I didn't think that it was possible and now that I'm here and having the time of my life with my sisters and my coaches, it's just a blessing. I don't know if there's a more humble gymnast in college gymnastics than Kiana Winston. She still says it's unbelievable to her that she's had the success that she's had. And this year, despite all that success, was the first time she's really felt confidence. We saw it earlier with her dancing before her bars routine. She's finally feeling it. And she said, wow, this is what confidence feels like. She's owning that in every facet, Bart. Thank you, Laura. Alabama will be on the floor in this rotation, and LSU on the beam coming off, by the way, a 49-625, the best score in the nation in 2018 on the bars. And they are coming to balance beam with just incredible energy and momentum from an unbelievable bar rotation. We'll see if they can settle in. Talk about how good it was. They had to drop a 9-9. That was their lowest score. The perfect person to take on this task, Erin McAdeg, one of the best leadoff performers on beam. Look at her fight for that. That's an unusual, slight, ever so slight bobble. Ontario. I love that in college gymnastics, we're seeing more and more teams really embrace the notion of performing on balance beam, not just doing the skills and the tricks and trying to hit and not fall or wobble. They are really expressing themselves on balance beam. And I think they're learning that smiling uh, or engaging with an audience, even though you're on four inches, four feet off the ground, doing very difficult skills, actually relaxes you. So well done, love that routine, and they're, they're off to a great start. Our famous splitometer. Now, keep in mind, the judges do not get to freeze them in this position. So you really have to go beyond split for their naked eyes to register that split position. Aaron does it beautifully. And finish strong. And that smile on her face. Aaron McAdag, money in that leadoff role for LSU on the beam. Winter Childers now for Alabama. Open the zip this rotation on the floor. Now as you watch, oh. ha ha, <laughs> I love that. Every time I see it, it almost catches me off guard. Gonna open the routine with a full twisting double back. That's a, one of those E passes we're talking about. Ideally in gymnastics, you're gonna start big and end big to get those huge scores. Music selection and choreography has become such an important part of college gymnastics. It's really where they can let loose, express themselves. We work so hard, it's nice to get that it's instant feedback from the audience. Coach Duckworth told us this week they're really trying to focus on controlled landings and quality leaps. Closes with her, oh my gosh, her combination pass. That should have been a Rudy to a layout step out. She had to tuck it. That's exactly what she did at the Michigan meet. Just ran out of gas, not quite in that condition to go strong. The open tumbling run was very nice. A little bit low on the landing with the chest down, but just ran out of gas here. It's a front one and a half twist, low already and really had to work to just get the flip around. Next up on beam for LSU is the other half of that dynamic duo leadoff spot. After McAdeg, 9-8-2-5. This is Maya Hambrick, the other senior. Beautiful full turn with the leg at horizontal. 
This is one of the most even keeled, level headed, almost non emotional gymnasts. Trust me, she has the heart just like all her teammates, but she's very controlled. She's really one of the keys to her consistency in the all around. I'd be hard pressed to tell you which event is her best event. She's so even. But so important on this event. Notice how soft she lands, that layout step out. She was really one of those athletes that sort of flew under the radar in terms of recruiting. And what a contributor she has been. And she has been really at ground zero as LSU has gone from, uh, you know, a contender to, you know, top of the heap. Beautiful control from start to finish. She was, she is just a master on this event. She has unusual combinations like this hitch kick into the aerial cart. Well, I love that she connects things together to get her difficulty. Very soft on the back hands from the layout step out. But this was just extraordinary air awareness. Goes right where that ground is and doesn't move. Friday Night Heights continues next week as we'll have number 13 Georgia and number 11 Arkansas at 7 p.m. Eastern. And after that one, it's sixth ring Kentucky and number 18 Auburn. Friday Night Heights is also streaming live on the ESPN app. Waiting for the judges on floor. They were just conferring about the leadoff performer, Winter Childers. Shea Mahoney waiting patiently for her shot to go. The sophomore from Algonquin, Illinois. And the score's in for Childers. It's a 9-6-2-5. So Alabama, six tenths behind. They need to be impressive here on floor because they have to finish on beam in the final rotation. What a beautiful opening pose for this floor routine. I watched her in warm-ups really working so hard on her leaps and jumps. You'll see them later in the routine. Opens with a pike double back. Watch the position in the air and perfect landings. Front layout, nicely done. A little bit arched on the second layout, but these are tiny little things that will improve. There are those leaps. That second leap was gorgeous. The position in the air, beautiful straddle. It's nice to see someone not lose their toe point at the very top of the leap. to see her maintain that toe point. Good, good footwork throughout the entire routine. She'll finish with a tuck double back. So just like the first pass, this time in tuck position. Gorgeous bat ma, leg up high. And finishes beautiful position. Toes pointed all the way throughout, love that. Now watch, the judges look for the position in the air and the landing, no foot faults. Didn't quite get her arms up, but she worked it all the way around to a controlled landing. Let's go down to Laura. We're about to see Kennedy Edney on beam for LSU, and we've told you throughout the night about how she tweaked her knee a little bit in warm-ups on vault, but talking to her earlier in the week, I asked her about beam and what her approach is. She said it's aggressive, and if you watch her before her skills, she will actually say the word aggressive out loud, trying to help her remember that's her approach. Maya Hambrick had a 9.875 before her. McAdeg led them off with a 9.825. What they really want to see from Kennedy in this spot on beam is just steady work. Hit all the skills. And the 
key to her doing that is that aggressive approach to all the skills. Just work just a little bit on the position in those leaps. The judges will probably deduct small amounts for not perfectly straight legs and really hitting that position. She's the reigning NCAA vault champ. Been competing recently in the all around. And a heck of a nice. meet against Florida. Front toss in a piked position. Really nice to see her come back so strong here. Struggled a little bit with confidence after that miss in warm-ups on vault, but wow! Oh, nice. Good for her. Beautiful one and a half twist. Great landing. Very happy for her. This is a front toss. Most of the time we see it tucked. She is piked for the most part. Bends the knees just a little bit to come in for the landing and watch this. What a way to finish. Opens out. And a great landing. And we go back to floor for Alabama. Maddie Desch will be next to go. Shea Mahoney before her. A 9-8-2-5. Desch the sophomore from Kansas. Gold medalist is a member of the USA women's gymnastics team at the 2014 Worlds in China. She opened last week with a double pike. I believe that's the plan here. She has a double Arabian that's really nice. Let's see if... There it double is. Arabian, all right, good job. <laughs> Pulled it out. She did a beautiful one in warm-ups. This one didn't quite have the same amplitude and rotation, but nice to see her do it. You notice the supplemental mat in there. Brian Rashila put it in and then pulled it out. In collegiate competition, you're allowed to use these mats as uh, protection for the ankles. There's no deduction for it. Watch your combination pass. This is a lot of fun. Back one and a half. Branny, split jump, front tuck. It's like a laundry list. Ring. And you see those leaps when they throw their head back and try and touch it with their back toe. That's good difficulty in a leap. Preparing for the final time run, getting a big breath of oxygen. Pull out a double tuck. There's a stuck landing. Beautiful high kick. Nice job, so good to see her pull that double Arabian out. Wasn't quite like warm up, but uh, she managed the landing. That's exactly what you're talking about was Coach Duckworth is saying, we want to add these e-skills, these more difficult tumbling passes as the season goes on. And that will improve their score. Notice she could have sat that down, but she didn't. So much fight there and ability. Nice high back one and a half. That's a fun and packed middle tumbling pass. Christina Desiderio, the freshman from Hackettstown, New Jersey now, on the beam for LSU. 9875 was the score for Kennedy Edney, matching the score of Maya Hambrick. Ariel walk over to Sison. They work so hard on the mental side of gymnastics and particularly on this event. They do a lot of mental training, particularly before the morning of the competition. They do their run through, they walk through the routines. Former All-American Ashley Natt works with the beam team and she said it's really a pleasure working with Christina. She said even though she's a freshman, she did her club training at Parquettes in Pennsylvania. She said she's so well trained, has such a good foundation. It's really easy to work with her. And her full off the side, well done. What a job by the freshman. There's a young lady who enrolled in LSU a year early. She turned 17 in her first month on campus. And here she is now competing in front of a packed house and earning the stick crown for the Tigers. Next for the Crimson Maddie Desch's score is in on floor. It's a 9-7. Abby Armbrecht now, junior from Mobile, Alabama. Abby was going to warm up her double layout just to get used to doing it on a competition floor away from home. They chose not to. Going to keep it conservative. Opens with a beautiful pike double back.
Watch the gorgeous position she gets into throughout this choreography. Very flexible, both in the legs and in the back. Nice change of pace with the sound of the music as well. High back one and half twist to a front layout. the gymnasts on Alabama are finishing that routine. I think it's a great like exclamation mark of the routine. Gorgeous. Just love the flexibility. When you've got it, flaunt it. Really show it off. Keep those toes pointed. Show the full split. They hand her the Bama stick belt. Christina Desiderio, by the way, had their third 9.875 in a row, and that brings up another freshman, Reagan Campbell. Another very well-trained gymnast coming in as a freshman just right off the bat. With her club training at Texas Dreams in Dallas-Fort Worth area with, of course, Kim zemesco Bird. Oh, no. Oh, that was unexpected. Now she would have combined those two, front aerial to the back handspring. Sometimes that is what a gymnast uses to count as their acrobatic series, which is a requirement. That was just a fluke because her technique is normally so good. Standing back tuck, right into another standing back tuck. Now if they connect those two, which they were pretty smooth, pretty connected. earn her some bonus points. Beautiful position in that second leap after the split half turn. Notice how she stretches, shows good posture throughout the whole routine. High double twist, Opa hop forward. Too bad on the, on the one series, just a little bit off. I think if we were standing on the end of the beam, oh, perfectly cute, yep. Didn't have the rotation that you need for her to really put that second foot down on the beam with authority. She was leaning back so that there was just no way to get that foot down. Coming into that routine, these two teams were separated by basically a point and a fall in collegiate gymnastics is a half a point deduction. So uh, extra pressure on the final performers for LSU on the beam as we look to Nikki Guerrero coming off of Abby Armbrecht's 9875, which for her was a career high. Nikki has some great difficulty that she will add to this rich team. And you could tell she probably wanted to do it there. She will add a full twisting double back in pike position. middle pass. It's a really nice pass. You don't see a lot of these. It's a back one and a half twist, which we see a lot of, but watch what she does out of it. Front full. Much more difficulty. probably imagine when they compete these routines at home the home crowd really learns the personalities and the routines of their athletes and can really get into the performance when you're competing away you've got to create that energy yourself finishes with the Rudy <laughs> a 
nice smile at the end. Nicely done for the senior from McKinney, Texas. Of course, there's a packed house of people here pretty much sitting on their hands. They, they I saw a lot of smiling happen. faces, but yeah. they weren't necessarily no, going to. we're not in Tuscaloosa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when we see that performance in Coleman Coliseum someday in Tuscaloosa, the reaction will be quite different. All right, let's go down to Laura. Yeah, you guys are mentioning the crowd, and Keanu Winston told me their philosophy this week and knowing how loud it would be in here is just to pretend like it was for them, but they said they did know it would be awfully quiet on floor, so that means everybody else on their team is really instructed to cheer as loud as possible for them. <laughs> Sarah Finnegan, final performer for LSU here. Reagan Campbell had a 9-2, so three nine eight seven fives and 9-8-2-5. And it comes down to Finnegan. Bart, I feel like I, have, I should buy a ticket for this performance. It is just so lovely. I think I jinxed her. Because normally this routine is as perfect a balance beam routine as you can get. From the big things to the little things. I was talking to Ashley Nat, and she said this. She just shifted into high gear mm. this year. Now, we're seeing some unusual mistakes. Uh, that's just a reminder that she is human, as they all are. I don't feel it's anything other than just slight technical errors. There's nothing wrong with her preparation or confidence. It's there. It just didn't quite happen in this routine. Dee Dee Bro's philosophy on beam is they have an inner squad in midweek. And everybody, doesn't matter who you are, competes for a spot on that lineup. And that's just really how she has prepped her team. Not a lot of teams use that technique because if you have your spot, you, you've you earned it. You get to go there every week. But Dee Dee makes them earn it every week, doesn't she? And not she? just that, Bart. I think it's important for every gymnast to feel so much a part of the team. That way they are. They all have an equal shot at fighting for those places in them. Nikki Guerrero had a 9.875, and Kiana Winston will wrap it up for Alabama on the floor here. With a very classically dramatic floor routine, from the music selection to the choreography. And if you can tumble elegantly, she does it. <laughs> Even the toes were pointed in that pike double back. It's a good example. Here's another gymnast who can do a double layout and would likely do that later in the season. But it's a long season, so they want to make sure they have the health and the energy by the end of the season to do the most difficult tumbling when they need it. One of the keys to their success, though, is that all the athletes buy into that because it takes a lot of patience. The little things in this routine and trust me they're not little things they are big when she hits those positions in her lead with perfectly pointed toes body position just exquisite nice tuck double back just a complete performance there from the tumbling to the dance I love the way she flows in and out of both it's like she dances into her tumbling and tumbles out of her dance. You never really catch her in a bad position. Good height, good energy throughout the routine. Laura's with Dee Dee Bro from LSU. All right, thanks, Bart. Coach, you had so much momentum going into Beam. How did they handle Beam? Well, I felt like our first two performers were fabulous and and. and um, you know, we can't handle what the judges are doing. Um, Kennedy had a little, tweaked her knee early in the warm-ups, but did a great job for us on beam. Um, you know, two freshmen went next, and I thought they did a great job. They have to learn how to fall, have to learn how to hit. So, you know, you can't slide them. It's not world hunger. And then um, Sarah Finnegan, I think she felt a lot of pressure. So that's something that she's got to get used to. What's your message to them heading to floor to finish out a night in front of this crowd? They want their feet underneath them when they take off of their tumbling pants. And so we're vertical, control their landings. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. LSU leading by six tenths of a point as we head into the fourth and final rotation here in Baton Rouge. We'll be back in a moment. 
back here in Baton Rouge, and this LSU gymnastics team has really found a sister in a little girl named Gracie Zonbrecker. She means so much to them. She's dealing with an inoperable brain tumor, but continues to be a spark and a light in these LSU gymnasts' life, especially Lexi Priestman. Gracie's a little girl who um, has a brain tumor that she's been dealing with. This whole team's been there to support her this whole time, and she's she's a tiger to us. My relationship with her is incredible. Um, the day I met her, I just knew that she was going to be like a little sister to me. It makes me like emotional to even talk about it because she is such a huge impact on my life now, and um, I text her all the time. I Snapchat her, but. Every time she's in here, she just puts that smile on my face, and even when I feel down or whatever it is, um, I just think, you know, someone out there is going through something way more difficult than I am, and she's a great example of that. Well, as they talked about, Lexi and Gracie stay in constant contact, and Lexi is always talking with Gracie's family as well. They had hoped that Gracie could be here tonight, but she wasn't able to make it, and they're hoping that she'll be back as many times as she can this year because they love having her a part of this team. She gets to come and do her gymnastics and be a part of everything that LSU Gymnastics does. Lexi told me that as much as they feel like they become a family for Gracie, she has become a true inspiration for them and every time she thinks about Gracie, puts a big smile on her face. So we know Gracie and her family probably watching at home right now. Big shout out to Gracie. We'll be back with more in a moment. LSU heads to the floor, and you know their teammate Gracie cheering them on. You know I'm straight, I'm on my way, I'm on my way I got my breath, I got my faith and I remember why I came I feel glorious, glorious, I feel glorious, 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 glorious I feel glorious, glorious And it's a packed house here in Baton Rouge at the PMAC. Everybody having a great time tonight. I think they gave out more than 9,000 pom-poms and they do that at every home meet. They have a wonderful, complete collegiate sports experience when the fans come here to the PMAC. They see an amazing team and they have a good time. Friday Night Heights continues next week as we'll have number 13 Georgia and number 11 Arkansas at 7 p.m. Eastern. And after that one, it's sixth ranked Kentucky and number 18 Auburn. Friday Night Heights is also streaming live on the ESPN app. We're set for the fourth and final rotation here in what is becoming known as the house that DD built. Alabama will move to the beam and LSU will be on the floor. Peyton Ernst, it's great to see her in the lineup here, Kathy. Of course, she started her collegiate career at Florida, completed as a freshman, then transferred, had to sit out last year. So it is especially emotional for everyone, really, to see her back on this event, her best event. Handspring layout, step out. So 
soft, so elegant. As a young lady, they had a very promising elite career and injuries sidelined her elite dreams, but it's good to see her succeeding in college. It's one of the more difficult jumps done on balance beam, that cheap jump where she arched her head back and tries to touch her head with her toes. These two teams are separated by six tenths of a point and Dana told us coming into this rotation, I want to see aggressiveness from my team on beam. If they can lock in a lead off performer for this event, that will be huge for Alabama. I think Peyton could be an excellent lead off performer for them in the future. Now the judges are gonna look first for that split. Now watch this jump, she arches back and nice position in the air. Those toes go right to the head and they really wanna see the hips flat, completely open in that position. Very difficult, nicely done. Great lead off for Alabama on their final rotation on the beam. Ashlyn Kirby, the sophomore from North Carolina, will lead off LSU's final rotation. LSU has always tried to push the boundaries here on floor, getting the big E passes. Ashlyn Kirby does not do the big tumbling passes, but this routine is so well constructed, the choreography is nice to the music. And if she, if she can do as Dee Dee said, get your feet underneath you on takeoff, go vertical, and control the landing. LSU returns 14 of 24 scores from last year's NCAA championship run. So, it's always a puzzle to figure out who's gonna step up. Because they had so much depth last year on floor with that incredible team with Ashley Nan, and of course McKenna Kelly who's sitting out with an injury. Someone like Ashlyn Kirby didn't have a shot at making the lineup last year, but she's a factor this year, isn't she? This is one of their biggest challenges when McKenna went out with the Achilles tear before season started. Very nice control on her landing. As I said, she doesn't have the big difficulty in the tumbling, but she's clean and controlled on those landings. LSU did graduate some huge scores. We mentioned Ashley Natt, Sydney Ewing, Shay Zamardi. These were people that were consistently 9-9 plus throughout the entire year. So in her 41st season, Dee Dee Bro trying to piece the puzzle together, but right now she's got a comfortable lead over Alabama in this final rotation. Six tenths of a point separating these teams coming into this rotation. Maddie Desch now up after Peyton Ernst gets a very impressive lead off 9-8-7-5. concentration before that acrobatic series, the front aerial to the back handspring. Sometimes you can think just a little too much. I know she's really trying to focus on her cues. Nicely done there. And what Dana really wants to see them do is look out at the audience, show that relaxed performance, engage, be fearless. And of course she trained that. You don't just suddenly get in competition and try that something you have to practice in the gym over and over to be comfortable enough to be aggressive in competition. Those leaps are going to have to clean up just a little bit. I think we'll see that happen as the season goes on, really stretch those legs, get them really straight, toes pointed. the calm, a little long on the pauses before the series, but nice dismount combination, two back hand springs into the one and a half. Good difficulty there. Go down to Laura. Well, Bart, we're about to see Ruby Harold on the floor for LSU, and as we've said, she's from England. Her dad here tonight, Terry, all the way from England to come and see her in action. 
He said he was so excited to see what this environment would be like. And considering it's a sold-out crowd, he picked a good one to come out to. She, of course, just honored to have her dad here to cheer her on, guys. Wonderful story. Ruby Harold from Bristol, England. Opens with a front double twist. Oh, had to step, pretty large step and cross over. That is an E pass though, the front double twist. Comes back with a tuck double back. A little awkward on that landing, chest was down. Of course, the United States is the only country that offers collegiate gymnastics at this level. And so it's not uncommon for elite athletes from places like Canada, Great Britain, Australia, and others come to the United States because you've had every interest in extending your career as a gymnast. The only place to do it is in universities in the United States. You can see the concentration on her face. Throughout the course of the season, you'll start to see those. Oh, oh no. And that's what I was afraid was happening. I could see her resting in the corner in that dance. The energy wasn't quite in the dance. I was afraid it might not be there for the tumbling. So that just takes a little bit of work. Needs so much energy in this last pass to really block off the floor. And then she missed the timing as well, but it's more the energy wasn't behind the pass. We noted prior to this rotation that the biggest question mark really for LSU this year was who's going to step up on floor. So opportunities for team members to make a statement and work their way into the lineup. And we wish Ruby best to the next time out. Maddie Desch on beam had a 9.825 after Peyton Ernst 9.875. That brings up Abby Armbrecht. Good okay. start for Alabama here. Yes. And Abby has such beautiful positions on the balance beam, unique poses on the balance beam. And of course, we remarked on her flexibility in floor exercise. It's very evident here on balance beam as well. Look at this. Pulls the leg up behind. Just a lovely position. Now, Alabama is definitely taking an advantage here. LSU's struggling just a little bit with their tumbling and landings. and. Okay. Gained some tensive point here. Gave up a little bit there on the landing out of the Acro series. Split jump into the sheet jump. Didn't quite get the toes up to the head. Certainly not in regular speed. We may see it in a slow motion and maybe it gets close, but the judges, for them to really see that position, it almost has to go beyond. Round off, one and a half twist. Oh, almost a stick, but not quite if they check the replay. So let's see, here's the split jump. Nice, and not quite. Feet are slightly apart, not quite to the head. They'll probably give her credit, but a little deduction for not quite perfect position. LSU's Sarah Edwards up now. You see her season floor average is just a 9.5. Now, Ruby Harold before her had only an 8.925. So, LSU nursing a lead of about six tenths of a point coming into this rotation, and they've squandered a bit of it. Front double twist, beautiful lift. Did you see how much height she generated off the floor with the punch? Get so much done in short little run. She doesn't even start from all the way in the corner and doesn't land near the corner. Got 
watch the footwork just a little going into those leaps. That's Ashley Clare, Kearney, big pen in the corner. She choreographs all the routine. Strong finish. Well done. So the goal is obviously to drop that one low score and each gymnast up that can do their job. There's money in the bank for them. Front double twist, beautiful execution. Just really nice lift off the floor. So it's set for LSU here in the fourth and final rotation. Scores impressive for Alabama on beam. 9-8-2-5 for Abby Armbrecht. Alonza Klopper now, she has earned this spot as a result of a beam change. Winter Childers was going to be in this spot and they changed the rotation just before this last event. She opens every team with a wolf turn, nice high leg position on what is often kind of an awkward turn. It's very difficult to make that skill look pretty. For the freshman from New Jersey, You know, Kathy, talking to Dana the other day, she said, on beam, we're blessed beyond belief because we have so many people who can really step in and be a factor in the lineup. That's a third sheet jump on this team. It's, it's not a common jump you'll see on balance beam, so to see three and one team. It's a risky jump to do. Of course, you're taking your head, your eyes off the balance beam. But it's also a, that position in the air that must be precise to get credit. Nice job by the freshman. You know, Kathy, we've been doing gymnastics a long time. I'm not sure I know why they I call knew, it a sheep I jump. Knew do you know that? Say that? I, have I mean, we no know idea. the genesis of almost every. <laughs> Can we do that for next week? Here, I don't know. Maybe they're saying bad at the top of the jump. Who knows? But look at that. She had to fight hard. She landed on the edge of the balance beam and saved it. Anybody write us and tell us why do they call it a sheep jump? I need to know. All right, back to the floor. Sarah Finnegan. By the way, Sarah Edwards had a 9.875. That's her season. Sarah Finnegan can light up the floor. Just beautiful dance skills, facial expression, and a great tub tumbling run here. One and a half twist to the two and a half twist. Watch the finishing touches in this routine. From the fingertips to the tips of her toes, everything is so precise. Notice how she absorbs the landing. There's no bounce there. The strength in her feet is what I love. The moment the foot leaves, they point, but also gives up no little wobbles. Gorgeous leap position. See that foot just point the moment it leaves. I tell you what, she just gave a clinic on how to perform a near perfect floor exercise routine. Absolutely gorgeous. Sarah Finnegan. Look at this, folks. What a thrill for the 13,729 in this building. It's another record at LSU. This is a lot of twisting, one and a half twist. Two and a half twist there to a perfectly poised position. Now watch. Oh, beautiful. That is absolute perfection. And you guessed it, she's going to point her toes as she flips twice. Kiana Winston on the beam now, coming after Klopfer's 9-7. So we're going to keep this theme going with feet. 
Watch how Kiana goes up on high toe, relevates, just a, it's a lost art on balance beam. So few gym, oh no, little balance check there with the arm. Covered it well. Now sometimes she connects all of that. She would go from that aerial walk over to a back handspring, lay out pike, woohoo! Good save. She was, I guarantee if we were on the end of the beam, we'd see a little out of line there, but like a cat, she lands it, pulls it right back over the center of the beam. Last year, she won the beam at the SEC Championships. And she does one of the more difficult dismounts off the bounce beam, tuck double back, nice pop off here and lift. Oh, almost a stick, not quite, just a little slide back. Great routine. And you can imagine if she'll connect those three, it really will upgrade the difficulty. This is wonderful to see though. Finish it off with great difficulty. Let's go to Laura. Well, we just saw Kiana Winston and just what she was able to do on the beam. She has said that this year being her final year, which is almost hard to believe for us, it feels like time goes so fast with these gymnasts. She said she's really trying to focus on making sure that she doesn't take each meet as the last whatever it may be. She wants to let it all hit her at the end. And Maya Hambrick, who's on the floor right now, said she's approaching it a completely different way, trying to enjoy every moment as the last one of its kind. Oh, wow. Okay, put the crown on her head. Let's see if she can finish the routine with it balanced there, because that was a perfectly stuck double layout. She's coming after Sarah Finnegan scores in now a 9-9-2-5. Woo, two and a half twist. Look at the height. Now at this point in the routine, you can just have some fun done most of the hard stuff and done it quite well with ease but easy for me to say <laughs> getting some encouragement there in the corner just excellent oh. conditioning I tell you what the energy that she has throughout this whole routine phenomenal preparation well deserved good for her and the PMAC erupts for Maya Hamrick. Wow. What a thrill on a sold out night. I tell you what, the audience wants a 10. Look at that, no deduction there on the double layout. As high as you can be on this two and a half twist into the front, controlled there. I tell you what, very few deductions, if any. Finishes strong with a pike double. <laughs> the best difficulty so far on floor exercise. And, as I said, give her the crown. And all that remains is the score. And it just came in. It's a 9.95 career high for Maya Hambrick. Not the 10 that the over 13,000 folks wanted here. But we go back to beam for Alabama. Kiana Winston had a 9.875. Nikki Guerrero, their final performer. Check this out. Three elements, back handspring, layout, layout. There's the solid landing we're used to seeing from this gymnast. Gotta watch her back foot, just a little on that second leap. Love the way she moves out of the full turn. Nice rhythm in this routine. Really working eye contact. Expression. Side area. She is often so solid on this routine. Very relaxed, more so this year than ever. Talking to herself, seeing if she can come up with a stick. Final one. Woohoo! Got it. What a nice job for Alabama on the beam. A lot of bonus in this pass. Two layout step outs in a row. Score on the floor, 
Lynch just has a connection with the balance being very solid throughout. And she wanted that belt. And Dana Duckworth, what she wanted from her beam routine is for them to stay in the Bama bubble. And they did just that. Really impressive scores for the Crimson Tide in their final rotation. To Laura. Well, Bart, you know you've made it when you have a bobblehead. So that means Ashley Nat, or Bugs, as we so fondly know her, has made it. Tonight is her bobblehead night, and you can see her on that corner right behind Juliana Canamella. She is a student coach now for this team, and she's so important. As you can see, right in these gymnast faces, encouraging them, and also making sure they know what they should think about before these tumbling passes. Juliana has come in in place of Kennedy Edney, who would normally anchor in this competition. Of course, she had the, the awkward landing on the vault warm-up, so they're being very careful with her. Remember, they had a low score. Ruby Harold had an 8-9-2-5. They've had otherwise impressive scores. So Kenamella can clinch the meet for LSU with a 9-1-7-5 or better. It doesn't seem impossible, but Ruby Harold had an 8-9-2-5, keep in mind. What a wonderful opportunity for this gymnast to finish this off. She just has one more pass. Just to get it to her feet, control the landing. Strong arms, strong arms, chest up. Well done. And she does it. That'll do it for LSU. They needed one more landing, and they got it from Juliana Canamella. What do you say? The PMAC is erupting. Ashley Nat knows it will result in the 30th consecutive victory for LSU at home. Folks, they haven't lost in this building in four years. There is a reason why. The Pete Maravich Assembly Center is considered the greatest gymnastics venue in all of America. So wonderful to see her have the opportunity here to clinch this team victory. Went hard for that final pass, and everybody erupted when she landed. And the score is in in 9-8-7-5, so LSU will get the win by .725 over Alabama in a thriller here tonight in Baton Rouge. Dee Dee Bro's birthday for the Dean of Coaches in the SEC. I think you can give her all the certificates you want, but what she wanted tonight was a W. You know what she's so excited about here? A record crowd. They have beaten the record for this attendance. She is so psyched for this program. She bleeds purple and gold. Awesome. We'll be back to talk to Dee Dee Bro and wrap this one after this. What a night in Baton Rouge. win for LSU over rival Alabama tonight and Laura is with the birthday girl Dee Dee Bro. All right thank you Bart we're not going to lose you because we have to ask you about this win. Dee Dee you said earlier that this was a night where some freshmen had to learn how to fall and Sarah Finnegan had to step up in pressure. What did they show you when it was all said and done? A lot of character and you know we tell them all the time hey when you fall it's not world hunger you got to get up and go again and you know they have to learn that you have to learn how to win you have to learn how to repeat it, get up and go again, and um, it's just, it's been so amazing to be with these, these kids, this team, and I mean, wow, look what LSU has done. 13,729 here tonight, a school attendance record. They were scalping tickets outside. What you've built here is incredible. What's your reaction on your birthday to that? Well, it takes a village. We've had so many incredible people working hard every day. And, you know, throughout the years, it's not always been easy, but I can tell you it's never been better than it is right now. I don't have a birthday gift for you, but I do have an Ashley Nat bobblehead. So there you go. Happy birthday, Dee Dee. Go sing the alma mater. Thank you. It's over. Oh, no. The alma mater's over. L-S-U. <laughs> I love you. Oh, all right, Bart. Oh, back to you. Congratulations, LSU. What a thrilling night, Kathy. You cannot fake that kind of passion and enthusiasm. That was her birthday gift right there.
Four years consecutive win streak in the PMAC for LSU. What a night in Baton Rouge. Coming up next, SEC Inside CFP National Championship Special. For Laura Rutledge, Kathy Johnson Clark, and our entire crew, I'm Bart Cloner. So long from Baton Rouge. A wonderful night in college gymnastics.